Will, why did you you went to a wellness center in California? Is that right? Mm-hmm. Tell me about that. What was that like? A wellness center. And why did you go to a wellness center? I don't know. Will <laughs> took me there. Why do you think we took you there? I don't know. So you thought we just had nothing else for you to do? Correct. What the hell did you just say? It is heartbreaking when you think where she was and who she is now. Some people are going to look at this and say, this is exploitation. She's being exploited. How could they do this? Right. What, what do you say to that? You know, and I understand that people will look at it and some people look at it and think that. But I will say this, first and foremost, my aunt is the executive producer of this documentary. And when I finally talked with her and I said to her, Aunt Wendy, why are you, do you want to do this? You know, you're clearly the health piece, all of that has to be addressed. Is now the right time? And she said, now is the perfect time because I want to take ownership of my story. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you would get liposuction. <laughs> okay. What the f brand is this? Ugh. Ugh? Yeah. Put it in the same position, please. Close it all the way. Dumbass. No. Go downstairs, please, and okay. order something and make you fatter. Okay. All right. See you in a sec. And um, I like the company. I keep there. And I, you know, I do what I can. You know, I do what I can. Yeah, I see. I see you working real healthy now. Please, Kevin. Yeah. Please. Yeah. But you also like how it's really private, because I know you like the gyms if they're private, of course. Yeah, I, I like it. And I also like food, which yeah. is why I've got to keep on my routines with going to the gym, you know? Yeah. And like, how, how have you been eating? Like, because everyone looks at you, you have beautiful skin, and like, people want to know what's, what's the secret. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not giving you points for saying that to me. You know that, don't you? Yeah, I'm trying. No, but you know, it's, um, I was born to- Please welcome Wendy's niece, Alex Finney. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for being here this morning. We watched the uh, documentary, the four-hour documentary, together mm -hmm. yesterday. Yeah. And I think it's very brave yeah. of what your family's trying to do. Because yeah. I think your family's trying to expose this conservatorship, guardianship issue. Yeah. It's, it's reminiscent of Brit Britney Spears. Mm -hmm. There are. Okay. Yeah. Um, so camera crew started filming Wendy in 2022. Uh, to follow her comeback with a new podcast. Mm -hmm. But they say they quickly realized something else was going on. I could see that also in the series. Um, Wendy seemed confused. She seemed disoriented. She was drinking a lot, heavily. And her mental and physical health s seems to be very concerning, right? Um, she chose to do the series. Right. She insisted on doing the series. Right. Mm -hmm. um, why do you think she wants people to see her in that state? Does she realize what it looks like, you think? Yeah, and you know, it's, it's, it's complicated and it's so layered because I know you and I have had conversations and, you know, it was hard at first as a family member to grasp, oh, Wendy, why do you want to do this? You know, you have clearly some health issues that still need to be addressed, yeah. a long road ahead of you. Um, and she was adamant that she wanted to control the narrative of her story. And um, one thing we know about my aunt, she has never shied away mm -hmm. from saying it like she means That's it, true. as yeah. we know. Yeah. And um, despite conversations that I had had with her, um, this was what she wanted to do. And we saw it all play out publicly in the blogs and everywhere. And her ultimate decision was that everybody's telling my story, no matter how painful it is, I want to tell it. Mm -hmm. And so it went from there. It's understandable. Yeah. Well, Wendy's been open about having Graves' disease and lymphedema, and she's also been open about addiction problems that she struggled with. But in watching this, you see that she's clearly struggling with cognitive issues. What do you and the, the family believe is going on? Is there more than just the Graves' disease, the lymphedema, and the addiction there? Yeah, and you know, there's, there's more happening. Mm -hmm. um, and, and like I said, I would, be, I would love it if my aunt could be here today to tell her story. 
but unfortunately she's not. Talk on Wendy Williams. And here's what I think about Wendy, and I've said this on the air. Uh, I used to work with Wendy in New York on WBLS. Oh, <clears throat> she so. did afternoons. I was on in the morning with the co as the co-host. I'll never get one time I go there and um, there was some big con something was going on in our listening party. And Wendy was in her car waiting. They had a car service or whatever. And I said, hey girl, you know, I'm walking into the building. She's sitting in the car. I said, girl, you going to go to the, to the after party? She's like, no. She said, I got a son. I'm going home. I don't do that. I'm sending interns. I said, okay. She's like, I ain't going to do that. I'm going home. I'm going to watch my TV. You know, she was regular ass mama, wife, whatever. Yep. Um, what I see with Wendy now, and I'm sad, saddened by is I keep saying this number one America and everybody got to stop with this whole mental health and that they care about mental health because we're witnessing her Kanye everybody having these breakdowns and ain't nobody reaching out to help we laughing or we turning our backs Wendy Williams to me I told somebody any woman and I want you to pay attention to this Wendy Williams and I hate when people also say karma coming back on I think that's real yeah. nasty that's nasty to me for somebody to even say that but anyway Wendy Williams is um, on the TV, her husband's her manager, gets her all the way there, and when you find out as a woman that your husband has got another, gotten another woman pregnant, bought her a house two doors down from yours, took your money, bought her a car, yeah. right? Bought her a car. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he you just sat up here now, you leaving me, all of this stuff, and the public finds out. Yeah. It's it, hold on a second. I almost said... <laughs> Nigga, I would have a breakdown. Right, that the whole world is watching my entire life fall apart. Right. And my man is cheating and taking my money and buying cars and houses for a chick who's living behind me. Right. And everybody knows, everybody's laughing and this and that. I'd have a mental breakdown. I think that girl had a mental breakdown and ain't nobody trying to save her. Yeah, especially when your job is dishing out that type of news about the other celebrities. And, and ain't nobody trying to... It comes at you and it's like, yeah, who do I go to when... That's so any I woman, do. any woman would have a, we gonna have a breakdown when the world ain't watching. When we find out our man then bought a car, a house, had a baby. That's with our money, we gonna break down without the world watching. Now the world's Correct. watching. And that's what makes her story so sad. Will, why did you went to a wellness center in California? Is that right? Mm-hmm. Tell me about that. What was that like? A wellness center. And why did you go to a wellness center? I don't know. Will took me there. Why do you think we took you there? I don't know. So you, you thought we just had nothing else for you to do? Correct. A lot of this shit pissed me off. Like, we got Wendy Williams, you know. She's trying to do a comeback and get back on TV, regardless if she's in good health or not, you know. She feels like she needs to be in the public eye. All she wanted to be as a star when she was growing up. So this is just, you know, um, a thing that she's not willing to give up easily, regardless if she looks crazy or deranged or, you know, unfit for the job. She's going to constantly put herself out there and be at the forefront of um, talk and media and um you know, all the gossip and entertainment that we, we love to cover. So, you know, uh, she doesn't want to take a back seat and she doesn't care if she has to tell her niece or tell her um, her sons or, or anybody like that, that she's not willing to back down and she's not willing to um, take a back seat. So, you know, um, this Wendy Wendy Williams situation is just, you know, um, uh, uh, how can I put this? It's it's just another um, way that people refuse to give up power. You know, you know, people get put in these positions just like these old queens in England and stuff like that, or you know, um, just people put like the face. You're the face of this. You know, you might not even have all the money or your the, the power, but they don't want to um, take a back seat or, you know, step down and let, you know, the next person, you know, take their place. So most people die in power, you know what I'm saying? And they just refuse to relinquish it, you know what I'm saying? So I think this is one of them things, you know, that uh, 
older people just have to deal with, you know, and and take a back seat to the next generation that's coming up and, you know, trying to, you know, um, spread their wings and become the next big thing. So, you know, Wendy Williams always been, you know, on the radio or in talk television or whatever. And we, we've grown accustomed to her and she doesn't want to, you know, let us down or she doesn't want to um, take a back seat. So we get accustomed to somebody else, you know, who, who are we actually uh, used to hearing gossip and stuff from, you know, Tasha K is the new Wendy Wilm. She, she fits the build, you know, Anyway, silence acceptance, we ain't having it. Like, comment, subscribe.